uh, respected dignitaries on the dais, honorable uh, High Commissioner of Australia, Mr. Rajendra Kumar, my colleague from the IAS, DG DRDO, uh, Mohammad Ujale ji, uh, honorable editor of ET government, and people who are participating in the conference. First of all, let me thank the organizers for uh, inviting me here. In my journey in the civil services in the last 34 years now, I've been involved in many assignments which involved a very intense input of e-government. In fact, I remember in 1997, when I became director of information technology in the government of state of Rajasthan, the debate then was, and the internet bubble has just started to balloon, the debate was what is the difference between e-governance and e-government? And you know, there was a huge issue of is it digitizing government services or are we also looking at governance issues? And mind you, there is a big difference between e-government and e-governance. And then that journey started and till now it continues uh, engaging intensely with the IT industry with IT solutions, with IT platforms. So uh, as Rajendra Kumarji and uh, DG Saab DRDO has very eloquently said, we have traveled quite a bit of distance. And if you recall about 25 years back, we started with information, publishing things on website so that people can know what the government does, what are the programs and activities. And then it got escalated to interaction, from information to interaction. Then people started interacting with the government through this e-platform, sending feedback, getting information on demand. And then the phase was transaction. So information, interaction, and then transaction. Then we started transacting with the government, with each other, on these electronic platforms. All that was supposed to lead to the last one, from information to interaction to transaction to transformation. And I think we have almost reached that point where we are on the verge of transformation. Some bit has already occurred. Some bit is about to happen. And unless that transformation occurs in which, in how the government engages with its citizens, then this journey of e-governance, e-government will not be complete. And I think we are very rightfully there and next five years are going to be huge in terms of how government engages with its citizens digitally or otherwise. I think a uh, lot of what I wanted to say has already been said by, by the way, Rajendra Kumar is the biggest expert on IT in the civil services. So you must acknowledge that if you don't know, he has worked for long in uh, Ministry of IT and he holds a PhD from MIT in this subject. Is it correct? Yes. So we must acknowledge his, you know, the range of knowledge and his exposure in the government. And that is why he very eloquently said, what are the trends, what are the issues? So I'll try and, you know, just supplement those arguments because all the big arguments have already been done. I think the next thing in service delivery should be, and it is going to be, the predictive service delivery. So now, when our passport is about to expire, or has expired, we go and seek its renewal. I think the next phase should, should be predictive. The government systems, the passport system should know that this person's passport is about to expire three months from now, and we should proactively start pushing the system so that it gets renewed. This is just an example of some kind of a doorstep delivery of services, but in a more predictive way. The other big point that was made by DG Saab of DRDO, how we should be breaking silos and how we have to follow an integrated approach which can only come up with convergence. Our Honorable Prime Minister is you know, very fond of telling us that all you secretaries should follow whole of government approach. In fact, in the last cabinet meeting 
about 10 days back on a Sunday. He told us you know, very eloquently as to, you are not just secretary to this department, you are secretary to government of India. So have that mindset that you represent a system which as a whole is offering services, solutions, and many other things to this nation, to the people of this country, including our overseas engagements. So I think that philosophy, that whole of government approach, also leads to the whole of government approach in delivering services to the citizens. Rajendra Kumarji pointed out on the SSO thing, the single sign-on platform. I have worked in Rajasthan and I can very proudly say that for last five years, Rajasthan has an SSO platform and even though I am here, I deposit my electricity bills, my water bills, my house tax of the where we live in Jaipur through that platform. And it is so convenient. So I think this is what they were hinting at when we said break the silos and bring things together. A great example of how this integration and convergence has really helped is the Gati Shakti project. I have worked a lot in highway sector for about seven years in NHAI and in the ministry. And we know how difficult it is to get information when you want to start an infrastructure project about what is lying underneath, what are layers in terms of utilities, where are the... So by integrating what is available in terms of different layers on a GIS platform, I think the department, DPIIT, has done a tremendous job in integrating it. And if there are about 81 layers there. And if you want to start an infrastructure project, you can immediately go to the, that platform and you can see what layers exist and you can get that information. It is available both to public sector and the private sector. I'll give you an example. Bureau of Indian Standards is with us in this department. When we wanted to set up some new testing facilities, we thought that it is in the interest of economy that we should set up the testing facilities close to where the industry is. So we went to Gati Shakti and found what is the layer of the industry. Give an example of transformer testing, the transformer uh, which is used in the electricity sector. So we realized that a lot of transformer industry is in eastern Rajasthan, western Haryana, you know, in that sub-geography. And the testing was happening in Ghaziabad, Bhopal, and Bangalore. So we decided that, no, we should set up the new testing facility in that zone because it would save upon the cost of industry to go for testing. This all happened, this could have happened without Gati Shakti also, but this happened quickly because the information was available on the platform. So this is how by following an integrated approach, we can deliver service faster, we can deliver it better, we can deliver of high quality, and would save on a lot of cost to the economy. The other example of the whole of government approach, not necessarily technology, is you know, when we were celebrating the 75th years of, 75 years of our independence, I think the government launched this program called you know, Har Ghar Tiranga. Every household should have that national flag, and how all the departments converged and delivered that is another great example of uh, the whole of government approach. What is happening in G20? I think the entire government systems and the private systems have converged, and we are so far have delivered a, a great show on how G20 related events and debates are rolling out in the country. There's a, everybody has heard of economies of scale, but there's another term called economies of scope. So I think when we talk of convergence and integration, what we are achieving is economies of scope. And in the end, it is good for the economy, it is more efficacious for the economy. And I think by very insistently, persistently following convergence and integration, we can all deliver this. Rajendra ji mentioned about the chat GPT, and I think there was a great answer from that corner of the room. Uh, the conversational artificial intelligence, 
Now, uh, it's a great thing. It's very interesting. And if I have one minute, can I read something from the phone? So I was just testing what it does. So I told Chat GPT that I have one son, but he stays away from me. He's a successful professional. But you know, both of his parents are in the late 50s. And while we celebrate his success, o success overseas, we also miss him. So I told Chat GPT, why don't you write a poem for me on this? I'll just read it out to you. And it came in one second. It says, in distant lands we lay our heads, but in our hearts our child is wed. Though miles apart, our love remains a constant flame forever unchanged. We miss his smile, his joy and laugh. We miss his voice, his tales and gaff. We miss his touch, his warmth and care. We miss him so much, it's more than fair. We watch the sun rise and set. Thinking of him, we can't help but fret. We wish to hold him to see his face, but distance keeps us in his place. We are proud of him, his achievements high. We are grateful for his wings that fly. But with each step he takes away, our hearts ache more and more each day. Though time and distance may intervene, our love for him will always gleam. We'll wait for him till we hold him tight. Our love for him will forever be bright. So, <laughs> it's very interesting. It was, it, it, you know, then that one second reply also turned me emotional. But you see the power of this technology. We just mentioned one child, two parents in the late 50s. He's successful, but he's away. You know, these four parameters. And here is a product, and you know, product which is a work of an art, a poem is delivered. So what I'm trying to say here is it has tremendous power. But so one side of it is that it has power which can be used. And since I now work for Department of Consumer Affairs, we've also already started integrating it for our grievance management system. So we're running a little pilot on, you can just speak that I have this problem or I want to do this. I bought a TV, it's not working. So it will take you in a conversational mode to the solutions that you have in terms of going to the national helpline or filing a case or whatever, whatever. So although on the one side, it has huge power to deliver services in a more interesting conversational way, which is convenient to a large part of this country, the people. But the other side is what information, I think Rajendra ji also asked what is the difference between Google and chat GPT and they were very great answers again from that side of the room. The issue is it can only reply based on what legacy data or systems it has. So if the legacy data is biased in terms of gender, in terms of race, in terms of other social evils, then what you get is also a product of that. So it is upon the government and the regulators to make sure that what we get should be free of biases to the extent possible. Not an easy task, but we should be working on it. Now the words artificial intelligence and machine learning are very loosely used. Sometimes you see a product advertisement on television. It says this air conditioner is artificially intelligent. You don't know what actually it is. So we have started an exercise uh, with the government of United States of America in the Bureau of Indian Standards to develop standards on AI as to what is AI, what is not AI, what are the levels of AI, and many other things associated with the reliability, the issues that it deals with on the front of privacy, the issues that it has in terms of, you know, many other things related to AI. So what I'm trying to say is unless you have standards, this thing can be very dangerous also and it can perpetuate the biases that we have in societies of all countries. And some of it is obvious. If you see more, if you read more information on how chat GPT is replying, it is perpetuating biases. Somebody uh, on Twitter yesterday posted, uh, so they said, you know, show me a person, a male from Bihar, you know, a female from Maharashtra. So, and the kind of pictures that were as a result coming out, you know, they showed the biases that the system has 
against you know these particular stereotypes so the point i'm trying to make is while chat gpt is great the other limitation is it has access only to data till 2021 and barred ai of google says now it will integrate with the search which is almost online so which is you know further powerful but further problematic so we need to be very careful by handling that i think including this conversational ai web3 is the next big thing i mean whether it is virtual digital assets the cryptocurrencies i mean legality debates apart i am sure there is a g20 group looking at it but since i again uh, work for consumer affairs in retail this whole issue of metaverse and is so relevant to retail and i think they are adopting it very quickly but when you engage in metaverse you have to be very careful that even internet normal internet doesn't have an identity layer in metaverse the identity is further diffused because when your avatar is going there is one more level of anonymity now consumer protection and other issues infringement of intellectual property and you know even harassment we have had cases where the avatars were harassing each other so all these the governance will become further complicated even internet governance is difficult we see every day that every country is struggling with how to regulate big tech with metaverse it will further get more complex and more accentuated now metaverse governance is based on daos the decentralized organizations so that adds one more level of complexity as to how then you govern if something goes wrong who do you hold responsible because it's totally decentralized so these are the challenges which we see ahead and uh, in terms of going back to integration i think we should also in terms of service delivery start looking at not individual as a unit but family as a unit we can start family registries so that the solutions can further be converged rajasthan did an experiment with the bhama shah yojana of health insurance this is before ayushman bharat came into play and i think based on the family model based on a family registry they did a tremendous job in terms of offering through a digital platform these public health insurance so there are examples in the country but like dgdrd was saying you know there are islands of excellence and we need through this platform and through other platforms to bring them together so that what we offer as next generation e government is integrated and de siloed thank you very much for giving this opportunity